Welcome everybody back to the show. We got Wendy Day with us today, and of course Emrac every day. What's up? Every, what's up, Wendy? What's up? Hi guys. How you doing? I'm slow. So, hey, hey, how are you? I haven't seen you in a while. I'm good, Wendy. How you doing? I'm good. I love you, Rick. I'm glad you're here. I love you too. <laughs> so, um, I had a, uh, I saw an interview the other day with that new. Uh, I couldn't even call him a rapper. He's more just an entertainer, Russ. Okay making a lot of noise out here. And he did an interview and basically saying like, I'm selling these shows out by myself. I'm, I'm bringing 1,000 or 2,000 people to these shows myself. A lot of these other artists, they gotta get this person, that person. They gotta have five people on the bill to do a big venue when I can do that myself, you know? And you might not think 1,000 to 2,000 people is a lot, but these people can't even do that by themselves. And mm -hmm. if you do the math, that is a lot, you know? And he's like, I can go to any city and do that. I'm going That's overseas impressive. to it. Yeah, so uh, very impressive. And then he's also That's saying the in he was very uh, heartbroken when he got into the industry. You know, he's been doing this for a while, but he was actually in and meeting a lot of rappers. And a lot of them don't have the kind of money they're talking about or showing. <laughs> they're just trying to keep up with the Jones. Now, Rick and I and Wendy. I remember when I felt that way. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm, I'm going to, and no disrespect to the arsonist. You remember the arsonist, Wendy? Yes. So oh my gosh. those are the first guys I ever worked with. Okay. And Q. I didn't know that. Q, wow. Yeah. yeah Q, Q Unique calls me. He's like, yeah, meet me down here in Brooklyn. I go into this basement dingy ass thing and I'm like, and they have like little old ass eight track boards and everything. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought, and I told him, I said, I thought you guys were rich. <laughs> you just put an album out. And they I remember said, oh, crazy. I bought it there. You talk about it was like in um Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Yeah, that recorded it. Oh, with uh, what, what was his uh, what was his other name? There was Q. Uh, damn, they had the light skinned guy. Q, you need you had Destroy, you Destroy. had uh, Swell, you Swell. had Freestyle. Swell was the one with the crazy hair, right? Yeah, yeah. Those are my guys. <laughs> nah, I, I was, I was with them. with those guys. They 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 made a wow. lot of money. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was so many of them was hard for them. to. But like, I remember being heartbroken in that. And I won't name certain rappers, but I remember taking them around and lending them 20 bucks to get something to eat. And like, right. this is a rapper that's on a major label, you know? I remember seeing Biggie on the train. I was on my way home to Brooklyn and I remember seeing Biggie and Life After Death had just dropped. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? It's the hottest album in the streets. Why is this man... On you mean you the, mean ready to die? He died before life after death came out. So you mean ready to die? I'm sorry, ready to die. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So he was riding the I was train. I was dumbfounded around. by that. Yeah, no, get yeah, yeah, continue the story. I just wanted to, you know, recognize. No, I'm glad you did. Um I was just dumbfounded because I didn't realize that artists weren't like rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I wrote an article about it for the source, not about him being yeah. on the train, <laughs> but about how we all think that they're wealthy and they're not. Mm. I mean, let's be honest, Mob Deep in the 90s didn't have that much money. I mean, let's be, no. because I'm, I was listening to Prodigy's book the other day. He's talking about living in like apartments, right? And yeah. they had a hit records out, right? Hit records. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, we finally got enough money for me and my girl to move to another house. But this is like 2000s. You've already dropped three major albums at this exactly. point. Exactly. So right. why didn't they make it? Like, it's, are, are now, nowadays, it seems like they're making more money. Are, but are they just more in debt? Well, what, what was happening back then, and it, it's actually worse today than it was back then because today they're 360 deals. Yeah. You know, Artists have to recoup before they see any money from their label. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, they were living on their advances. Mm -hmm. So if they were advanced twenty five thou or fifty thou out of their budget, you know it was so expensive to make an album back then yeah. that all of the money went to making the album. Yeah, you know these guys were 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 strapped. I remember um, mm -hmm. Q Tip speaking on a panel at City College, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how he was still living on his. On his, he was still sleeping on his mother's sofa. Man, I, I think you did a story mm. about that before because I remember reading something about did. it. Yeah, still, wow, that it's yeah. like dumbfounding, you know? It's like, it is dumbfounding because, like, even when I was doing music videos, I was making good money. Like, you know, I still do music right. videos today, but mm. when I was like really just focused on just music videos, 
I mean, I was living well. I might have been living better than some rappers. You probably were because you didn't have to recoup. That's you true. know, indie artists do really well because indie artists get to keep the bulk of their show money and the bulk of their streaming income. Yeah. And I'm working with an artist today who makes between eighty thousand and one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month Ooh. in streaming and show income. And, that, and it sounds like Russ is in that space because he's doing like. Oh, he's yeah, he's definitely in that yeah. space. He's doing thirty mm. million a video, and then he's doing like sixty-four million on streams. That kid's making nice upwards of nice. hundred thousand a month. We're doing right? five million streams a month for that money. Mm. Wow! So if he's doing if he's doing twelve times as much, then he's making like twelve times the streaming income. Yeah, mm. I, I was just talking total song. I don't think he's doing sixty million a month, but he's doing. Oh, my like, bad. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess not. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But tally together, he's probably doing like a few, you know, like five to ten million a month streams. Yeah, that's good money. Mm. It is. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, that's just on one platform. And he's independent, right? Yeah. Salute to Russ, and you know what? A huge salute. Ooh. He's booked by Kara Lewis, who's like, you know, oh, yeah. Kara Lewis is a monster in this. You know how I got up on Russ in the beginning? It was because of Tuma's um, rap caviar. Uh, okay. Playlist. Yeah. He put him on there. I like this playlist. Yeah, no, I mean, he puts me on to a lot of rappers through that playlist. You know? Exactly. I got a call from a rapper that I'm friendly with in Phoenix who, because I guess Russ lives here in Atlanta. Yeah. And um, Mickey Zobel is the artist in Phoenix. He called me and he's like, yo, do you know Russ? He's awesome. And he mm-hmm. raved about him so much. And I really respect Mickey as an artist. So I went and checked Russ out and I'm like, oh, my God, Russ is really talented. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Nah, he can like Ooh. sing, rap, he can do everything. And it's like, it's just totally left. Yeah, it's, I like his image too. He's like very like down to earth and he's very like regular. Yeah. He wears like his hair no out crazy. He's just with him, you know? He seems like he's Spanish almost, right? Is he Spanish? I don't know. He oh, might be, yeah. He might be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah. But he's dope. He has a different look, everything. Like he just does him. He's not following any trends or anything. And Exactly. I can do nothing but respect that, especially today when everyone's following the Migos trend. Exactly. Heavily. Everybody's everybody's like on somebody else's dick. Yeah. Another one to watch uh, out for is Ugly God. He's he's really making a lot of noise. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah, Where's yeah. he from? I have no clue, but I checked out a few of his songs and they were pretty good. Okay. You know, I'm in that beginning stage of getting into him. I saw he's been doing a couple interviews on a few platforms right when I caught a wind of him. So it was, you know pretty dope that's cool so guys it's all smoke and mirrors out here wreck have you ever had an experience meeting a rapper and you're you're so big... many. <laughs> too many like i'll i'll be putting your favorite rapper on blast left and right okay so but we... what was your what was <laughs> what it. broke you in like what was the first rapper that kind of like whoa first rapper oh, man. you can't name names because damn Whew. You don't have First to name rapper? a name. Just, I mean, just, well, how about just an experience? No, all right, I'll put it to you like this. I've been driving since I was young. Mm-hmm. Right? So I say, and that to me, it wasn't even that young. 19. I've been driving since I was 19. So, you know, when you see, you know, rappers that you listen to or you vibe out to, mm-hmm. and you notice they don't have vehicles. Like, you know, and me, I was working, you know, I was always hustling, you know what I'm saying? Or or I had, you know, a construction job. I had one job, construction job, and I was hustling on the side. Okay. So, but I always was, I always kept up with a car, mm-hmm. you know? So, you know, rap is, you know, they, they so-called live this extravagant life. Me seeing numerous rappers with no cars and all that, that did it for me. I'm like... It's, this this whole thing is smoking mirrors. Like these these dudes yeah. is frauding. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, I mean, and then once I got put myself in the industry, it, it was like, you know, I knew everybody's business. You know what I mean? Because you become close with these guys, and it's a small you circle. See, you see exactly everything for what it is, yeah. and everything that they was portraying wasn't. Well, you know, wasn't reality. Right. No, pretty much. Exactly. So that that did it for me, you know. All right, we'll end this segment on that note. Check you later. Salute.